Hello Starseeds and welcome to this episode of Astrology Chats where I'm going to be talking all about the planetary rulers of the zodiac. I have previously done a very brief live presentation on these planetary rulers a few months ago. I was a little bit more of a novice astrologer at that point, but I will link to that in the description below because that intel is still solid. Astrology itself is defined as the observation of planets. Instead of challenging, the planets point to things, describing what is already happening in the world. I would also like to say that astrology is agnostic, and as such, it is the observer that derives meanings from the observation, a way of context and personal perspective. Each sign in the zodiac from Aries to Pisces, has a planet that rules it. Having knowledge of this, especially with respect to what planet rules your sun sign, can be incredibly powerful, as the stars in the sky today can influence your day-to-day. And also, knowing your ruling planet can help you gather intel on your star seed personal blueprint and as well as your purpose and mission within this incarnation. And so without further ado, let's get started into the presentation. Okay, everybody, this is my presentation all about the power of the planetary rulers as presented by Sacred Soma Alchemy. As per usual, I'm just going to go over a brief agenda just to guide our discussion this evening. First, we're going to start off with an introduction to planetary rulers, followed by the planets of our solar system. We're going to start with Mercury and we're going to go all the way to Pluto. I consider Pluto a planet, so Pluto is included. We are also going to talk about the sun and the moon and the earth in the context of planetary rulers within the zodiac and astrology itself. And finally, we're going to end it off with a brief discussion on aspects in your birth chart and how you can use this knowledge of planetary rulers to help you find power in your own life. Additionally, when we go over the planets in the solar system, We're going to look at the mythos that come from each planet as per the gods that are also associated with that planet, as well as a little extra sparkle of Sailor Moon. You'll see it in the next few slides. But first, let's take a step back. Who are the planetary rulers? They are luminaries and energetic masters in the sky. Every astrological sign is ruled by a planet including the sun and moon. And some have some old and new rulers, as well as some have dual rulers, the planets and the pantheon. As you all know, through my Sacred Soma Storytime serenade, I love mythos. And remember, storytime and stories themselves hold incredible power. And so, in regards to the planets, the mythology of each planet can be tied to the energies of that planet and vice versa. As mentioned in the introduction of this astrology chat, we are also going to look at the planets in the order of their appearance in our solar system, kind of like a classroom. You can see Mercury at the beginning and you can see Pluto at the end, very tiny. We are gonna start our exploration of these planetary rulers with the first planet in our solar system, the planet closest to the sun, Mercury. Also known as Hermes in the Greek god myth, the messenger of the gods and ruler of both Gemini and Virgo. Mercury in the natal chart is about communication, intellect, and memory. Mercury is usually within 28 degrees of the sun, so there is a strong influence of Mercury on how one presents themselves to the world. The glyph of Mercury has the winged cap that also references Mercury taking 88 days to circle the sun. It is the fastest planet in the solar system. The next planet in the solar system closest to the sun is Venus, Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty and the ruler of both Taurus and Libra. 
Venus in the natal chart rules relationships, both love and platonic, as well as how you love and depending on the position, how you need to be loved. Venus is the planet of beauty, art, poetry, luxuries, but also love, unions, romance, marriage, and partnerships. Venus is also known as Earth's sister due to their cosmic similarities. Next, we have the planet of Mars, Aries, god of war and ruler of Aries, and is the ancient ruler of Scorpio. Mars is the planet of energy, action, desire. It represents the beginning of all beginnings. It is our first breath and our first scream, being the one responsible for the body that we have and the incarnation that we are in at the present moment. It is a strong symbol of unchangeable fate and karmas. The planets of Mercury, Venus, and Mars are considered personal planets in the natal birth chart in the sense that they influence your personality and personal vibration or experience. Jupiter tends to be more of a social planet. It also is associated with Zeus, the king of the gods, and it is the ruler of Sagittarius and the ancient ruler of Pisces. Jupiter is the ruler of knowledge, good luck, wisdom, and fruitfulness. It tends to be a strong position in the chart, as well as one that is expansive and lucky, known as the great benefactor. The glyph of Jupiter symbolizes the crescent of the soul that rises above the matter. Pure consciousness and soul triumph over earthly things. Next, we have the planet Saturn. Saturn is also known as Kronos, the god of time and agriculture, the ruler of Capricorn and Aquarius. Saturn is the ruler of time itself and in ancient times ruled over the golden age. Kronos is the father of Zeus and the major gods of Olympus. Restriction, discipline, and roles in society are Saturn's domain. He also deals with the shadow side as well as the darker side of personality. It can be a challenging planet in astrology, but it can also provide power if you know how to wield it. Next, we have the wild card of the zodiac, Uranus. Yes, I pronounce it Uranus, not your anus, but whatever you can call it, whatever way you want to. Oranos, the god of the sky, lover of Gaia, and ruler of Aquarius. And so, as I have mentioned in previous astrology chats, all of my Aquarius friends, you have a dual ruler in Uranus and Saturn. And as mentioned, those two rulers are very different. Uranus is both the genius and the mad scientist, the ruler of novelty and surprise. Uranus is the sky that covers the earth and is the father of Saturn or Kronos, who castrated him with an adamantium diamond sickle. I also pointed out to Kevin, is adamantium real? Meaning the same adamantium that was put in Wolverine from X-Men. This mythological metal or steel that is said to be something of a diamond or crystal in nature that was strong enough to cut off Kronos's dick. And that dick fell into the ocean and from the sea foam from that came Venus is one of her origin stories but that's a whole story for another time we can get into. Uranus also represents the higher octave of Mercury. Mercury as you can recall is about the intellect, communication, and memory and so if you think of Uranus as being a higher octave it means that it's from a perspective of intelligence and respect um representing expanded consciousness. Something to also note here is that Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto were not discovered by astronomers until, I forget the exact year, but they weren't 
as part of ancient astrology. And so when you say, when I say ancient rulers, you will say those are rulers from the past because we didn't know that these planets existed until they were discovered. So going back to these particular planets, Neptune is associated with Poseidon, the god of the sea, and the unseen kingdom, also known as the ruler of Pisces. Um, Pisces is also said to be ruled by Jupiter. Um, I have to kind of cross-reference that a bit, but it does make sense for Pisces to be ruled by both Neptune and Jupiter. In astrology, Neptune is considered a planet of inspiration, dreams, psychic receptivity, illusion, and confusion. Neptune rules spirituality and all things that are subtle. Considered the higher octave of Venus, but in a more mystical sense. It can also represent illusion and glamour. And this can depend on interplay with other energies and other aspects in the chart. Last, but certainly not least, a favorite planet of mine, Pluto, Hades, god of the underworld and ruler of Scorpio. Pluto is the last planet in the solar system and represents death, the underworld, obsession, psychology, and even sex itself. Transformation is an important theme as it comes to Pluto. And Pluto rules the subconscious forces and the idea of darkness before a rebirth. Pluto is the great revealer. So my starseed friends, that takes care of the planetary rulers from Mercury all the way to Pluto. When you say that you are a particular sign, what that means is that the sun was in that particular planetary ruler's domain when you were born. So for example, being a Taurus, having the sun, the sun was in Taurus when I was born. And Taurus being ruled by Venus means that you want to also take a look at where your Venus resides in the chart to see if it's in a powerful position or in a more challenged position. And by looking at those things, you can look at how you have relationships and what to look for from how you feel chemistry with other people and as well as what values you perhaps need to find in other people. The Earth also does not necessarily have a particular um, sign that it governs over. There are some astrologers that say that it actually resides over Taurus, but I will get into the next slide and we can get into that into a bit more further detail. Let's look at the Sun, the Earth, and the Moon. The Sun, the ruler of Leo the Lion, representing the solar and masculine energy of the sun, as well as Apollo, the god of the sun, as well as logic and reason, as well as the great inventor. I'm going to get into the earth in just a moment, but let's also take a look at the moon. The moon is the ruler of cancer and represents the inner child, as well as the inner mother in the birth chart as well as the goddess Diana or Artemis. The sun and the moon have a very special relationship with the earth. Some astrologers say, and I mentioned this previously, that the earth actually governs over Taurus. Now, this can be a dual rulership perspective, but I would like to say that the earth functions as a waypoint. The earth represents Gaia herself. The earth represents us and our material body and how we interplay with the cosmic energies that are surrounding us, even though we are rotating around the sun. The sun is a particularly important placement because your solar sign is the sign that you think of yourself as when you do your horoscope. But if you were to look at all of the planets in your chart, you may discover that you have a strong planetary impact or ruler 
in another sign or rather another planetary ruler other than the main sun solar sign and that can be important to note especially if you're dealing with when i was talking about marilyn monroe a uh, a malefic planet so mars even though it is um it gets a bad rap right mars and saturn because they're considered malefic planets now as i said at the top of this astrology chat astrology is agnostic and so there can be just more challenging positions but you're going to be a lot more empowered if you know that so you can act accordingly and as well as surround yourself with support with supportive folks and supportive um vibrations that help you work through those challenging aspects and now that we've gone over all of the planets as well as the sun the earth and the moon we're going to talk a little bit briefly about aspects in your astrological birth chart i went into a little bit of detail about malefic planets and how understanding those positionings or challenges as it comes to those different planets and different rulers can empower you in your lifetime and same goes for all the other different aspects in your birth chart if you are an aries for example and you are ruled by mars you are going to be particularly affected by what mars is doing in the sky right now aspects in your astrological birth chart to look for are major aspects as per your sun and your moon sign especially so for example i'm going to use myself as an example i have a trine with neptune in my birth chart meaning that many of the positive or more favorable aspects of neptune will come through in my main personality um you could also have an opposition or perhaps a square with neptune instead in which case when i talked about neptune it's about also illusion and deception and glamour and so there are also challenging aspects when it comes to dealing with neptune and that can be things like self-deception or not really being fully present in this reality when it comes to dealing with perhaps traumas or things that do need to be dealt with within this lifetime head on you can't just hide in your dreams all the time and that i'm speaking to you pisces right now and finally i wanted to leave this off with a brief thank you and you can check us out at sacredsomaalchemy.com if you would like to get an astrological birth reading so you can get a sense of who your main planetary rulers are in your chart and plan accordingly for the upcoming spicy astrological events. The major things happening right now is that we have a serious, serious, <laughs> we have a serious portal open right now from July 3rd all the way till July 7th. Uh, the full impact of it is actually going to be this evening, July 5th. I'm hoping I'm going to get this, uh, astrological chat out there before 11 11 but we'll see how the editing goes on it but i would like to thank you all for joining me so thank you star seeds for joining me for this episode of astrology chats all about the planetary rulers of the zodiac i hope you found this presentation informative and if you would like to get more insider information on astrology on and how you can use astrology to help empower you, I would recommend joining us on the warrior class at Locals. I'll have a link to that description in the description below, as well as you can join us at Sacred Soma Alchemy with a membership. So all of those things are available. You can also leave a comment and just contact us by the usual channels. Until next time, we're going to be doing an astrological synastry reading. I'm going to do it between June and Johnny Cash. I'm in part of like modern great lovers series. And so if you have any other suggestions of that, I would love to hear it. So Starseeds, until next time, I hope you have a beautiful evening wherever you are. <laughs>